great worship set this morning. Hey, you may be seated if you hadn't already got to your seat, man. Uh, I am super excited to preach this morning, uh, not unlike every other Sunday, but uh, I, I am really excited. It's, it, it's easy, like Eastern Christmas, if, you, if you've called, been called by God, if you can't preach at those two times or seasons of the year, you're in the wrong place, okay? So I, I got a heart full I want to share with you. Uh, if you will, let's go ahead and open your app or turn in your Bible if you have it with you. Uh, I want to look at Matthew's account. I want to look at Matthew chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 1 and 2, and then I'm going to jump down into that chapter and pick up around verse 9. They will be on the screen in just a moment for you. Before I begin there, so let me say it to you again because I talk fast and preach fast. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, all right? And then I'm going to jump down from there and pick up in verse 9. There we go. There are the verses on the big screen now, and I will pick up in 9 and read through 12. We'll get there in just a moment. Um, a couple of things real quick before I get into the, 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 the word and the sermon that's in my heart. Um, there is, uh, because of the demolition or the demo that's been going on at the downtown campus, there is a pile of two-by-fours. There is some metal off uh, to the back. If you look at the campus, you look at the building, uh, go down by the, the side of it and around behind the building. And for the last two weeks, our executive pastor, uh, Pastor Bradley, uh, has asked me to remind you that if you want those two-by-fours or pieces of two-by-fours, there's other size uh, wood out there and some of the metal that you are more than welcome to come get it. Some of it or most of it has nails in it, so if you can do something with that and get them out, that's fine. I, we're going to absolutely, they'll, be, they'll go to the uh, landfill, they'll go uh, and, and be recycled or whatever they do. I, I would love for somebody, even if, you just, if they just use it for kindling or something of that nature, that, that you, you could use it and recycle it back into uh, this community or somebody you know, so it's, it's there and it is for you. We will not need those things, what little bit we will need in the, in the rebuild or setting the sanctuary up. Uh, it re reward versus the time we'd have to try to get all those nails out and, and, and different things. So it's, it's just it's scrap to us, but it may be a treasure to somebody else. Uh, and so we just want to make you aware of that. If you, Pastor Bradley's sitting over here, most of you know him. If you are interested and you just want to go pick that up, that's awesome. Or if you want some details about it, Pastor Bradley can give you those details. He is, again, our executive pastor and, and has his detail-oriented. So uh, please, please know that. Then the other thing, you still with me? Say amen. This one is more personal, and they're both not in the service this morning. There are a lot of our student ministry that are serving uh, the children's ministry uh, because we're having a big Christmas party over there this morning. But I was, I didn't get out of this parking lot last Sunday. If you are here last Sunday, you'll understand, or you were watching, or if you've listened and watched since then. I, uh, I didn't get out of the parking lot before both of my daughters threatened me. Now, they need prayer because they shouldn't threaten their daddy, but they threatened me that I have to absolutely clear the air. I have to make sure that I say this correctly. The first one is this. Lana said to make sure that everyone watching and everyone here, that you understand it is the shoes that stink, not her feet. You had to be, you had to be here, okay, but I've got to do this because I promised them I would. So it's not, not her feet. The feet don't stink. It don't make the shoes stink. It's the shoes that stink and make her feet stink, right? Stank, stunk. Now, the second one is this. Addie was livid, all right? She said, Dad, I did not and have not had all Fs. So when I said, using them as an illustration, I implied or even said that she had all Fs. As a matter of fact, I think she may have had one sometime this year, but at the current setting and season, she does not have an F. She has A's, B's, and C's, all right, maybe a C. So I want to make sure that I get the story correct, okay? I'm still trying to get over the feet don't stink, but the shoes stink. Uh, anyway, but that's my children. So I wanted to make sure that I, I, I got the, the story straight. On behalf of my family, that way it makes life a little bit more enjoyable for me at home, and I don't have to send them to their room without dinner. I, I don't do that. Anyway, Matthew chapter 2, verse 1, say amen if you're there. That's a couple of you. The rest of you can see it on the screen. Here, here is what the Bible says. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he? who has been born of the Jews. For we have seen his star, that's what we want to highlight, Christmas lights is our series, 
For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Jump down to verse 9. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it come till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Verse 12. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. If you take notes, I want you to write down this Old Testament reference. Numbers, Numbers chapter 24, verse 17. It won't be on the screen. I don't send them all of my cross reference. I want you to do a little work as well. Numbers 24, verse 17. Now, what's interesting about this verse, you with me, say amen. What's interesting about this verse is that it is being prophesied or it is, it is a vision that a pagan person has. Balaam has this, and here's what Numbers 24, 17 says. I see him, capital H, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. Listen to what it says. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Now, I want you to put down this as another cross-reference and setting it in context. We're talking about the Christmas light. Isaiah chapter 60, Isaiah chapter 60, 1 through 3. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 3, the prophet Isaiah says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Now back to Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. In the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east come to Jerusalem, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star, not a star, his star in the eastern sky. It was a fulfillment of the prophecy, even the pagans would recognize that a star would show the way, that the light would be born and that it would bring people out of darkness. Now, this series, Christmas Lights, has everything to do with the star, has everything to do with the light at Christmas time. I am born and raised right here. Most of you know where I'm from. Where am I from? I'm from Nuri. I am a mud cat, all right? I'm a Nuri boy. I'm a Mill Hill kid, all right? And so most of my life, other than a short season, I've lived right here in, God bless, Seneca, South Carolina. And one of the things that, as a young man, I used to get so excited about, and it's changed a little bit, but I still get excited in my 40s. I used to get so excited when I would see in town, go through downtown, the old town, and you would see that they were beginning to set out the lights by the poles, and as they would set those lights out, they would come back and they would put those lights up. I knew as a young boy that when those lights were being put out, that Christmas was on its way. It was just a sign that something fun was about to happen. Now, in my day, for a long time in my day, some of you may remember this, there, there, there was this green garland that they would put up in, in, up in town. It's not the main drag as we know it today, but up what was the main drag then on uh, the top upper end uh, of uh, like Harper's Five and Dime and so on and so forth, that street, they would put up this green garland, and it would run across the street. It would come from four corners, and in the center of that was what? A great big old Christmas tree that was made out of that green garland, I believe is, is what you call it. And I would get so excited about that in the parade that was coming up. And so I began to think about this year, how as I'm taking Addie and Lana to school, and as I go down through town, that the exact same thing in my 40s, I get excited because I watch them put out the little lights by the poles that they're going to run down 123 or they're going to run through downtown. And then I watch them come back and get in the bucket truck and the city employees begin to put those lights up. And I get excited. It's a sign. Now what's interesting is, is that that's the exact same thing 
that over 2,000 years ago is the exact same thing well over 2,000 years ago that the first Christmas, it all began, it all began with a light, with a star prophesied in numbers by a pagan, ba Balaam. It said, I see the star arise, that he would shine bright and bring light to darkness. And then Isaiah would prophesy and talk about how that he would bring us, the Gentiles, in, that they would, would call us out of the darkness. And then we find in the Christmas account of Matthew that the wise men, the magi, that they see that star in the eastern sky. And it was a sign to them that something was on its way, that something had happened, that there was change, that there was excitement and all these good things. It's the exact same thing this, that way for us at Christmas. And so I wanted to share with you just a few things that I believe that Christmas brings, that these lights bring to us in this first message. I believe that those lights still, even in my, I don't think that I'll ever grow out of that, that I get excited when I see those Christmas lights go up. Now, this year we took it up a notch because one of your trustees and leaders in the house had the great idea at our downtown campus to give away hot chocolate and water at the Christmas break, and it was a slamming success. It was overwhelming at the amount of people that flowed in and out of that parking lot and around us, and so it's just an exciting time. Same thing was going on at the first Christmas, the start. Now, can I tell you a few interesting things, even if I can't, you can tune me out, but... I'm going to tell you, there's a few interesting things in studying for this morning. There's a lot of speculation of what that star might have been, other than you and I being real, real like simple and to the point that it was just a star. It was a lot of speculation, like what, was it a supernova? Uh, some scholars think that it was uh, uh, Halley's Comet. Um, th there's been a lot of speculation, and some of the study that I did, I found it just absolutely, because I don't know about you, you, you guys, but as a young man, I also wanted to be an astronaut. You know, I remember getting that first telescope from J.C. Penney, and uh, I, I, I still to this day am fascinated by the stars and the concept of flying to outer space and traveling to other planets and all that good stuff, okay? And so I found it interesting as I'm reading that history records, you with me, say amen, that history records around 6 B.C., somewhere around 5 to 6 B.C., that there was this correlation or or there was the alignment of Saturn, Jupiter, and they believe Mars would have come in line. History records this, worldly. It's nothing to do with the Bible. That around 6 B.C., which would have been the same time, history records the same time. I know I'm just kind of geeky like this, but, but please bear with me a moment, all right? I find it fascinating that they try to debunk God. They try to take Christ out of Christmas, if you want me to be that way, okay? They, they try to do all these things, but here history... Secular history records this phenomenon happening and, and, and being in Pisces belt that this bright light of this conjunction of the, of the planets would align. Now, I don't know that that's exactly what happened. I, 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 may, I may lean toward the belief that God just dropped a supernatural star in that moment in the east and, 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 and they, it led them. Okay, I may lean toward that thought process on it, but I think it's kind of cool how God is an amazing God, and you're listening to me say amen. amen, that he's an amazing God in that how you and I think things are coincidental, that we, you and I think that there's happenstance and, and, and it's just it's a random thing. No, 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 I think that you even look at the very first Christmas and at history records this correlation of this alignment of these stars, that God is an amazing God of order and that he can cause things to align, that he can cause things to happen. Now, I think this star brings to us, this light brings to us, I believe it brings direction to us. I believe when we see the light for who he is and what it is, it, it changes our direction. It brings new purpose to our lives and Sets us on the right course. If you're taking notes, I'm preaching already, I promise. It's the same thing for them. They seen the star, they didn't know which way to go, but when they, when they recognized it as, that, as his star, it put them in the right direction. It's the same way for me was in 1998 when I saw Christ for who he is as my king, as my Lord, as savior of my life, he put me in the right direction. Go back to the, the series we just finished. He will lead you in the path of righteousness. He will put you with the right people in the right places at the right time. And history records those, those planets aligning. I find it interesting. Fascinating, as a matter of fact. I also find it fascinating. I was talking to some folks. Heath and I were witnessing to them. And, uh, and they may even be watching. And it was, we had a great conversation, probably a half-hour conversation, um, if not more. And so 
I had this in my heart, and so I began because they were talking about church and not having to be in church, you know, like we see this as church, right? Don't forsake the gathering. Uh, you, you get it, right? And we need this, right? We need this community. H- have you ever had people tell you that they, they feel closer to God when they're in nature, they're outside, that that's their church, that's their sanctuary? And, and, and if you hadn't, I have. Trust me, all right? I've had those say, well, I, preacher, I, I'll, I'll watch you online, but, but really, if it's weather's nice, I'm going for a hike and things of this nature. And, and, I, and I get that, right? But there was a season in my life I'd have been critical of that. I, I, I had my tie on too tight, I guess. Have you ever also, let's, go, let's stay with me, I promise you I'm going somewhere. Also in my years, nearly 20 years of, of doing this thing called ministry, I've also heard and people will testify that you can't have spiritual and science together. I believe they validify each other. I think you can't have one without the other. And so if you're following me this morning, I know it feels like I'm chasing a rabbit, but I'm not. I'm talking about what the light brings us and the direction it takes us and how things don't happen by happenstance, that a, a, a tooth don't just break at a certain time, that there's a reason he puts you. We talked about that this week. There's, there's a reason. Now, I don't understand the good, the bad, or the ugly, the sickness and things of this nature or the bad side of that, but things happen for a reason because all things work together for our good. God is a God that can align even the planets in the galaxy to cause a bright light. Now, I'm not saying that's what I hold to, but I'll tell you that's what history records, and he can cause things to align. He can put you in the right place. I also believe with all my heart that you can't separate these things because watch this. These guys, th- these wise men, these magi, they were astrologists. They were astro- they they studied the stars, right? Let's be simple with it. That's that's how I roll. And so that is scientific. They're also guess where the stars are located, right? I know it's kind of elementary. Where are the stars? They're outside. And they had heard, they heard the prophecy, they had heard, they saw that star. So I, I just want to make sure that you download this morning, at least in the community that I get to preach to and do life with and those watching and the hundreds we'll reach through all the technology, that I, I don't want you to be critical of someone that says, man, I feel close to God when I'm outside. I, 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 I don't want you to criticize people that say, I, I'm a scientist, but I also believe in Christ. And you say, well, how can you have the two? Listen, this is the great example of the very first Christmas of the star being in the skies. These were pagan scientists that were seeing a star outside and trying to find the king that had been prophesied. It was his star. And so I wanted you to download that, listen, God has a way of working in all things. God has a way of working, and and I was telling Miss Joan this morning, I don't understand why things happen, right? God is a mysterious God. His ways are higher than our ways. I don't know why it takes us, some of us, the hard way to learn. I don't know why sometimes we don't listen when God just taps and he doesn't have to pick up the megaphone of pain and suffering for to get your attention. I don't know why some of us, we're more hard-headed than others, but I do know that God works all things for my good and for your good and that he'll cause things to happen and that when he puts that light, what that light brings, just like that very first Christmas then and when Christmas comes now, when I start seeing those lights, it's a sign that something's coming. direction my purpose changes and so I wanted you to understand in this Christmas season that that the light that that star that was in that eastern sky that I also believe some say well how does it follow in the east and all this good stuff there's some great studies if you if you into geeky stuff like that there's some great articles Sandra sent me some last night she was reading uh, I asked her we was coming back from Greenville I said I said do you like to wait to Sunday to hear it or, or can I go ahead and share some things with you while we're driving you know that long stretch uh, between Easley and back into Clemson, which is filling up quickly, by the way, with businesses. But so I began to share with her those things about how history records the planets aligning and it being so bright. You can also find pictures of that. You know, internet is a beautiful thing to interweb. You can Google it with just about anything. And so she she began to get fascinated by that and sent me some incredible articles. I, I I'm telling you, our God is an awesome God. And Christmas is so much more. And how. The lights of Christmas, they, they bring things to us. The first one is direction. I, I think the other thing that, that we see in these wise men, that not only did they, they have, now they've got direction and purpose and, and they got permission, of course. Now, we know Herod, we know Herod 
wants to kill all the male. He, I mean, he does not want Christ to be worshipped, okay? But let's stay focused on just those wise men, those, mad, those, those astronomers. Let's stay focused on that and find ourselves that, that that same light was bringing them direction. That same light will bring you direction. That when you see Christ for who he is and what he is and what he is capable of, it, it will absolutely put you in the right direction. The other thing that I, I believe, the same thing still in my 40s, the same as I was a kid when I would see those lights and those, that, all that decoration getting ready to go up. In my high, at home, the same way. Uh, I've loved the, the little things we put on our social media. Uh, the crazy movies at Christmas time was always changed. I, we, we knew when, when we saw the Charlie Brown Christmas and, and all these little TV episodes that all these things were signs. These lights would change and, 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 and it, would, it would be this direction we're headed. Uh, I know that in the secular, it's like we're going to get this gift and we're going to have this good time and family's going to come together. And for me back then, it was school's going to be out. I shared this at FCA uh, a, a week ago, I believe, uh, at Seneca Middle School, and they were all like, yes, school will be out. The teachers were the loudest ones, by the way. The school, this, the Christmas break was on its way, and, and so the direction those lights. But the other thing I, I, I believe, a couple more that I, I believe those lights bring is, first, the, the second is, is I, I believe those lights at Christmas time, the same way it was when they saw the star in the eastern sky, I think it brings inspiration. I think it brings direction, yes, but I think it brings inspiration. I, I, I'm inspired when I see those lights. I, I, I um, Let's go real simple with it. If it's dark, if it's dark, in the darkness usually breeds fear, the unknown, the doubt. You see, it's in the dark moments, those moments that you're all by yourself, that your sick, one, sick loved one is laying there or, or, or you're, 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 you're going on your way to the hospital. You know, in those moments that you don't know what, what the outcome may be, in those dark times, it's the light that brings inspiration. It's the light that keeps us going. It's the light that inspires us. It's the light that gives us courage. You see, darkness, it, it breeds fear. And, and if you were listening to me, I, I told you that Isaiah and even, even uh, Balaam said in, in Numbers, listen, that there's going to be a light that rise. That the, that the darkness that, that covered the earth, that this light would rise. And they would see this light. It would bring them out of the darkness. Lights at Christmas time, man, they, they, they show us the direction we're headed. We're headed toward Christmas. We're headed toward Santa Claus coming, right, if we do it in a secular setting. But we know that it's Christ's birth. And so it changes our direction. But it also inspires us, man. I, I, I find great courage being in light. I'm not going to sit here and just go over the fact that I, I, I was scared of the dark for a long time. Okay? I've already told you that. But I think the simplicity of it is this, is that in darkness, that's where fear lives. And God says, I don't want you to be afraid. Be of good courage. He wants us to understand that a light will shine. Even if it's the smallest of lights, that light will inspire us. Isn't it amazing? It's, it's, it's kind of like hope. It's like the, 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 the smallest taste or glimpse of hope is an amazing thing that will inspire you to keep putting one foot in front of the other. I love what you were telling me before the service, Joan, about the person you were visiting because we're live and everybody's here. And, 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 and we kind of know that it, it is the doctors and the way we look at it is probably just a matter of time. But they were saying, I think I'm going to beat it one more time. You say hope is an amazing thing, and they may possibly beat it one more time. Hope is an amazing thing. You see, that light, it brings hope. Christmas lights, they bring hope. They fill the house. It's just, it's a beautiful thing. Both our girls have their own tree in their rooms. And, 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 and over the last week or so, after I tucked them in and, and, and eased the door shut, because when he's the door shut, Junebug will get into bed with both of them at, at separate times, our, our baby girl, our dog. Anyway, and so we have to shut the door. She'll go in there and... and Lick him in the face and snuggle up to him. But I've noticed as I shut the door that, especially with those Christmas trees, there's this huge glow of light coming off from under the door. And I can't help but think about how that light, and, and it was funny because most of you know, if, if you follow us, that every picture that we posted at home, Sandra's in sweats, and even in the summertime, uh, I keep the house pretty cold. And... Uh, it was funny, Lana was saying, and now listen, I don't freeze them out or anything. It's around 70 in the house. Uh, they would prefer it to be around 80, um, and so pray for them. But it's funny, Lana said the other morning, she goes, uh, Dad, I, I need a drop cord. I got to make sure I can plug that, that Christmas tree in. 
she said, I, I, I want it, you know, want it on for, for the season, for Santa, for all that good stuff. But she said, it was really cool. She said, that thing puts out a lot of heat. Now, what's interesting is, is that her bunk bed, her bottom bunk she sleeps on, well, the tree is set on this table right by her bed. And I begin to think about how that light, that light is inspiring. The light brings warmth. Hope brings warmth. Hope brings courage. Even when our mom goes from this world to the next, Bobby, it's still inspiring. It's, it's a light that brings hope. That, as I said, she's dancing with Jesus. No more pain, no more suffering, no more struggling to eat even. Basic of abilities. That's what light is about. That's what this light brings us. It brings direction to us. It brings, it brings order out of chaos. It, it brings inspiration in the midst, of, in the midst of, the, uh, of great discouragement. Can you imagine? They were looking for that star hundreds. There's 400 years of prophetic silence between the Old Testament and the New Testament. There's hundreds of years that have gone by that they had heard. I wanted to share those cross-references that they said the star, the, the Messiah is coming, the Messiah is coming. And it was all these years, and yet here that hope was still there. And then these pagan scientists, we have seen his star. And they were inspired. Lights bring courage. They bring inspiration. Lights bring direction. Thirdly, I think lights especially at Christmas time, to stay on point. I think they bring direction. I think they bring inspiration. But I, I think they bring a sense of, listen to me, celebration. Something festive about all these lights, right? Something festive about the different colors. I, I like the last poll. Do you like color lights or white lights? I wanted to say is it, this is not a racist uh, post, okay? And, uh, but my media pastor would have been like, what? Uh, you know, do you like the big bulbs or the small bulbs? Uh, I like big bulbs and I can't, you know what I mean? I didn't, I mean, I, I just make sure you're listening, right? It's a sense of celebration, right? Whether they twinkle, right? We, we, we added this year to the front of the house this light. Y'all with me say amen. We, we added this year to the front of the house, and they've been out a while. I'm just real cheap, and, and I admit that, okay? And so some, we waited. Somebody, I think your parents actually give this to us. It's a unit that you, 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 you put, and it, it lights the house up. You know, there's LED lights, and they're green and red. Well, it has two settings. One setting is just, it's just green and red, and it, it gets there, and it gets, it's really cool. It gets the pine trees uh, in the cove and above our house. And, uh, but the girls, they like the other setting. The other setting, you, you mash, and it's still green and red, but they moved. They swirl. And the girls, their room, uh, at least the, the windows uh, to their bedroom is on, on, the, on that same side of the house. They like their blinds to be wide open so that light comes through. Not only they got the trees in there, but those, those, those LED lights come in. And, and, and uh, they're definitely my children because uh, it's trippy hippie. They, 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 they like those lights to swirl around in their room. And it, it, it just gets them excited. It's, it's the same thing at Christmas time. Those lights, they, they bring a sense of celebration. It literally says when they found Jesus, when, they, when that star led them, that light led them, and they found the Messiah, they found Jesus, they were overcome with joy. These pagan scientists, right, that worship God outside, that the heavens truly declare his glory, they worship him with the best of gifts, the frankincense and the myrrh, and, and they lay it down and they, they, they absolutely fall before him. See, the lights bring about this sense of celebration and when you realize who Christ is yes it's good it's good to make all the treats at Christmas it's good to exchange presents. it's great to put up all the Christmas lights but it's awesome when you realize all those things are just conduits or just uh, branches off of the main thing that we celebrate the birth of Christ those lights bring celebration I get excited when I see them I knew when those lights were being put up in town and I know I'm dating myself I'm, I mean I'm only in my 40s but I would get excited I don't know if you guys can remember and sometimes it'd be TGNY, but a lot of times it was the Sears that was downtown. I think it's a tire place now or a coin laundromat or something. But I, I knew that I was going to see Santa, and I was going to see Santa there. I was going to go up there, and I was going to be able to tell Santa, this is what I want. This is what I, this is what I want this year. And I was going to get the sitting lamp. I was going to, I was going to get a, 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 a little kind of stale or old candy cane, but it was still a candy cane. And I got to talk to Santa. And I was excited. And I still get excited. I still get excited. I don't go sit on Santa's lap anymore. You know what I'm saying? 
I, I, I grew out of that last year. Um, but I, I still get excited because I want to celebrate. I get excited because I, I, I got kids, and, and I get excited. And, and I want you to understand these lights, they bring celebration because I, I, like to see my, I like to see my girls get excited when they see the presents under the tree or that morning when they get to get and open those presents. I like that celebration now. I, I, I just think it's a beautiful thing. It's the same way with our spiritual walk with Christ. The, the cool thing about this walk is it just don't have to be one time a year. It can be every morning that I get to get up and I get to approach the throne of God and I get to be awed and, and overcome by his love and his mercy and his kindness that he'd give me another day, that he'd give me another opportunity and it makes me in the mood to celebrate and he's worthy of our praise and he's worthy of our worship and all that we have, our lives that we'd be given to him and that light brings celebration. All kind of lights. I found out something interesting about Harry as well. He said when his son, I believe it was your son, and, the, and, and he had his band and they were performing and going, that, that one of the responsibilities that Harry had was lights. Now, maybe off a little bit on saying it verbatim, but, but I know that he was into all the lights. And if you come out when we give away hot chocolate, there was this really cool light by the building. And the kids, I mean, they loved it. I, I love it too. But there was this really cool strobe, I mean, this weird-looking light. It had all these different color lights projecting out of it. Found that interesting, man. He still says he enjoys that, right? It's a celebration. He's smiling about it now back there. I can see him. You may not, but I can see him. He's smiling big. Lights bring happiness. Lights change. There was a season where you could buy a TV. I don't remember what brand. Stay with me a moment. And in behind that TV would change colors, and it was the ambiance. Sharp. Tyler Cannon would know. If you watch his social media page, he and his wife and family, you'll notice that under their TV, there's always a light projecting there, uh, uh, under that, with the, with the TV set. I was thinking, that's cool. Light sets the tone. Listen, we, we, we're big kids out here. Men, women, light set the tone. Celebration. I think my wife said stupid. I don't know. You all right? It's Christmas time. The light, the same light, the very first Christmas, brought direction. You listen to me? It brought direction. It, 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 it literally changed their direction. It showed them the purpose. It, it, it brought inspiration. It gave them courage. It, 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 it put them on the right path. And then when they get there and they're in that light, it brought this celebration. It's, it's time to... To, to celebrate and to have joy, to have purpose, to have courage, but to have joy. There's something about the Christmas season. I don't care. Listen, I don't get, y'all know, I don't get into the political. I don't, I don't watch news at all. I love people that know me now and around me a lot. When they begin to tell me a story, they'll say, I know you don't know this because you don't watch the news. I don't watch the news at all, literally, zero. The only thing that I, I like to watch, to be honest with you, is 60 Minutes. And it was cool to see in their 50-year celebration that the, the, the guy that started, I can't remember his name, that he, he was ADDDDD as well. And he thought if you couldn't tell a story within a few minutes, then it didn't need to be told and have a, have a show. And I said, well, maybe that's why I like 60 Minutes so much. I don't do the news. I, 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 I understand what the world, I understand. I've read my Bible. I get it, right? But, man, there's something. There's something about the Christmas season that just kind of resets it for a moment. That whether the music, and again, I get tired of the Christmas music on the radio. I love it. I love this morning. I, it's, just, it's just a joyous time. I love it. I'm sitting at the table on my desk this morning, listening to preaching, reading some commentary, just, just kind of getting myself. It's like pregame stuff that I do. It's, just, it's, it's almost ritualistic without being uh, too worldly and, or, 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 or pagan-like. I just, it's just things I go through on Sunday mornings, and Addie is, is uh, jumped in the shower, and I can hear, she's, she's got her iPhone in there, and she's got Christmas music bumping as loud as it possibly can go. It's just joyous. So now, most mornings, I go to the, the eye tower, and I, and I, I, I take the, the, one of our old iPhones that's hooked to it and, and put it on a Pandora at, at one of the, the uh, Christmas stations. It's that light. There's something about it that brings joy. Now, I, know, I know there's relatives that you're not looking forward to seeing. I know there's parties and plans, and it seems like there's a hustle and bustle. I get it. I, I know that. I understand that. But I don't want you to lose sight of the light of Christmas and what it brings to us. It brings direction, yes, 
Hey, listen, have you ever tried to drive your car with your headlights off at night? First, I'm going to say, idiot. The second, I'm going to say, you didn't, get, you didn't get too far. I'm not talking about when you run from the popo. You didn't get too far. It's hard to drive in the dark. It's hard to know if you're going in the right direction in the dark. So light brings direction. That light brought direction. Not only does it bring direction, it brings courage. Listen, sometimes in the darkness is where fear lives. It's in those deep moments of depression that you feel all alone and isolated and no, else, no one else understands it. What are we doing this for and what is, it, what is the use and what's the worth? What's the, what's the purpose in all this? If you see the light, it will inspire you. It's amazing what a, a teaspoon of hope will do. Well, just the, just the taste of the brightness of Jesus will do to inspire you and inspire your family. And give you the ability to have joy, that, that celebration, that, that joy, even when you're around that relative that you have a hard time being around. Or the relative's boyfriend this year. That's what it's about. Joy. Let, let me give you one more thing, and I'll, I'll wrap it up and get you on your way on, in, in a timely fashion. I, I think the light brings to us direction. I think it brings to us inspiration. I think it brings to us a sense of celebration. But ultimately, listen to me, and I, I, I'm, I'm trying to be very churchy right here. I think ultimately the light brings to us, as it did those guys at the very first Christmas, I think it brings salvation to us. As a matter of fact, if you take notes, I want to, to remind you of something Jesus would say. I, I read a lot of things leading up to his birth, but let's, let's fast forward over into John's Gospel 8, verse 12. It's one of the great seven I am statements. The Greek there, when he says I am, is the same words that was used all the way back in the Hebrew language when Moses said, well, who am I going to say sent me? And you remember what God said to Moses, you just tell them I am sent you. It's the same thing, but Jesus now is God in flesh, and so he's beginning to say this. And, and he says in John 8, 12, he says this, then spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, it's fascinating, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have light of life. You, you, you see, and being warned of God in a dream, verse 12, chapter 2 of Matthew's account of the first Christmas. That they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. You say, well, what does that have to do with salvation? Listen, you can't come to the light of Christ. You can't come to the light of Christ or Christ the light. You cannot look into that light. You cannot get in that light, and it does not and will not and cannot. And I'm telling you, you can't look into it. You can't have it shown upon you that it don't change your direction. You see, they were headed one way, and then they saw the light, they followed the light, even in their speculation, even being skeptical, even being scientists, even being pagans, they follow the light, they see Christ, they're overcome with celebration, they're in the presence of the light. Jesus says, I am the light of the world, and when you see me, if you will lift me high, I will draw men unto myself and women unto myself, and when you see him on the cross, in the tomb, and arose from the tomb, when you look into that light and have that light shine on you, it will change your direction every single time. If you're doing the same thing that you were doing last year at this time, you have not seen the light. Like Hank Williams would sing. But if you look into the perfect law of liberty, if you look into the light of Christ, he will absolutely, 100%, beyond a shadow of a doubt, bring light to your darkness. He will bring joy to your heart. He will bring a sense of direction and purpose, and he will change you and put you on the right course. And it is amazing how he can even control the planets and align them at the perfect time so that you can see the way to get where you need to get. Even in the bad, even in the difficult, God will align things to get your attention in this season so that he would change your direction. That's the Christ we follow. And he said, I am the light of the world. You remember when Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments? He gets in the presence of God, and he comes down. What, what, what happened to him? Man, it, it was like he had a glow about him, right? I think Hollywood put him, he had white hair now. It was like he went to the tanning bed real quick, and his hair got bleached, and he got real tan. 
When he got into that light, it changed him. When he got into the presence of that light, it changed him. So I believe with all my heart, the same thing at the first Christmas with those Christmas lights. I believe it gave them direction and purpose. I believe it absolutely inspired them. I believe with all my heart. Listen, and this is before they're saved that they celebrate. They knew what was coming. And then they left a different way. Did you know you can leave here a different person today? Did you know that you may get in the same car, you're wearing the same clothes, hopefully. You, 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 you're, you're the same name, your same social security, the same uh, height and weight that's on your, 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 your driver's license even though you lied about it. Um, that all those things will be the same. But when you leave today, did you know that you can leave a different person? Did you know that he can brighten you on the inside? That you may still look kind of gloomy and, and, and kind of dim on the outside. But did you know that it starts on the inside and it'll work its way out? Do you know I've watched people say, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm not going to be a part of that. I, I, I'm just going to be like this. And I, you, you know, bless me, God, if you're going to bless me. And I watch them over a course of time. They eventually get into the rhythm and the sync of what God is doing because the Holy Spirit and the light will shine upon them, and you get in that presence, I don't care. How, I, listen, I was telling that same conversation we had, the same conversation we was having with this, this, this gentleman. He owns a, ba- a bar and grill, owns two of them, was very successful, and, we're going, and they're actually digging it out of us, man. They're wanting one. They're wanting, wanting. I told him, listen, I, I, I want you to come to church. I don't even care. I've told other people this. I don't care why you come to church, even if it's, if it's to hear me spit, snort, and sweat, and carry on, or cut a jig. I don't care why you, because when, in 98, I was going to church only because the, the, I was invited and I, and I wanted to please the people, uh, the girl I was dating's mom and dad, I'm sorry, Sandra, but I was, you know this story, and the only reason I was going was so that I, I, I could please them, and they thought I was a good guy, because I wasn't a good guy, they thought I was a good guy. And I messed around, and about a third or fourth time that I would show up on Sunday, happened to be Easter Sunday, and I see Christ, I see the light. How about that? So that's why I don't criticize Easter and Christmas people, all right? You say, well, church, well, I'll tell you, attendance goes up, but Easter and Christmas, good, good. I don't care why they get here. Just get them here. Let them see the light. When they see the light, it'll change your direction. I promise you, from that Sunday in 1998, that Easter Sunday, you've heard my story. You know my story. You're walking it out with me. I promise you, I went from going that way to that way. Now, there's been a lot of detours on the journey since 98. I promise you. I promise you. You can leave here changed. I promise you that the Bible is littered with men and women that didn't even really believe that most of the world wouldn't even give time when Christ said, I love you. As a matter of fact, I come for you. And all you have to do is accept that light. It's, it's really cool. You don't have to create the light. You don't have to plug the strand in or the, or the pre-lit tree in and half of them not be working. Mm. You don't have to spend hours trying to figure out which one it is that's not working. You don't have to spend any more time trying to figure out why things are not working for you. It's not a light that you can manufacture. That's why it doesn't take but just a few moments when I get around somebody and they tell me they're a Christian or they're this, this, and this. It don't take but a moment or two to realize if they truly have the light in them. You don't have to spend any more time trying to figure your way. All you have to do is faith your way in and accept that light, bask in that light, celebrate that light, and receive that light. Will you stand to your feet, please? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we thank you for this season with heads bowed and eyes closed. Father, we thank you for this season. We thank you that it is just an absolute fun time of the year. Busy, yes, but God, a fun time of the year. Thank you for the beautiful lights and all the decoration. Thank you, God, that those lights, well, they're a sign. Just like it was all those years ago, Father, I pray they see that sign this morning. Those listening to the live stream or that will listen in weeks to come, I pray, I pray, Father, they receive and see the light. 
with every head bowed and every eye closed in this place, the Bible is very clear. Whoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see, there's not an ABC, there's not a canned prayer, there's not a, a formula or a system or religious rituals. There's no works, at least any person should boast. It's a gift of God, and you just have to receive that gift, that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Christmas light. You just have to receive that. You don't have to know John 3.16. You don't have to worry about if you're a Baptist or Church of God or Catholic or Episcopalian or Presbyterian. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you've been baptized. It doesn't matter if you know the Ten Commandments. It doesn't matter about any of those things. It just, it, all it requires is faith in the name Jesus the Christ. And so I just want to help you articulate that. There's nothing special about the words I choose to use other than the name I use. You say it from your heart, not your head. You say, Jesus, because there's no other name. Jesus, save me. Forgive me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you. In Jesus' name, nobody looking around. If you prayed in the auditorium this morning to receive Christ, to have that light come into you and to shine through you, I want you to do something on the count of three. I don't want you to be ashamed of him. I want you to be excited to celebrate him in your birth. On the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three, boom, just throw that hand up and say, I prayed. Yes, um, yes, um. Okay. So three of you here this morning or so, if you're watching online and you, you have cried out and you said, forgive me, save me, would you, would you reach out to us or reach out to someone of faith and let us know? Let them know so that we can equip you and pray for you and pray with you and help you on your journey. Will you look this way this morning? Maybe you're here and, and you stand in need of prayer. Maybe there's something you need to pray over or pray about. Maybe you want to come as a family. Maybe you want to stand in the gap for someone. Maybe, maybe you just got caught up in it. We all do. And you just kind of want to reset and refresh this morning. Whatever your need may be, you'll find no judgment here. You'll find freedom here. You'll find a place that's been prayed over and cried over. I know it's a school auditorium, but it is the house of God because we are here and God lives in us. And we've come to do nothing but worship Him. Maybe you need prayer. Again, there will be people down here that will pray over you and for you. We're going to open the altar. Pastor Thad, our worship pastor, will begin to lead. Our executive pastor's down here. Sandra's down here. Heath. Uh, Grayson's down here. There'll be all kind of folks that'll be down here to pray over you and with you if you need that or just leave you alone with God. But the altar is open, so we want you to come. Thad, will you lead us? As the words will go on the screen, we begin to sing, don't be afraid to move. Maybe you accepted Christ over the last several weeks and you want to be baptized or, or you want to let us know that you've been saved. Won't you come and make us aware of that, make my staff aware of that so we can...